Google has been hard at work this year and just today they've dropped the Gemini 2.5 flash preview and I gotta say this is a fantastic all-rounder model but what really makes it stand out isn't the performance it's the pricing it's positioned as a low latency cost efficient workhorse model the Gemini 2.5 flash is built for high volume real-time applications with strong potentials in chatbots, analytics, as well as agentic workflows. It builds on the Gemini 2.5 series where strengths are in advanced reasoning and it's aiming to deliver quality on par with larger models like Gemini 2.5 Pro but with faster speeds and drastically lower cost and this is definitely a huge step forward in the space of AI. Now here's the kicker, it comes with two different pricing tiers. For the thinking mode, you're paying 15 cents per million input tokens and $3.50 per million output tokens, which is a steal for that level of performance for a thinking model. Secondly, you have a non-thinking mode and it drops to just 15 cents per million input tokens and you have a jaw dropping 60 cents per million output tokens which is just insane. This is insanely cheap, especially for real-time applications, and Google is making it clear that the Flash is here to power the next generation of various sorts of agentic workflows, chatbots, or anything that we've seen on this channel. Now, what's also nice is that the Google team has increased the request per day, the rate limit for using this model. So you now have it so that within the free tier, it gives you around 500 requests per day, which is definitely a lot more than what we saw before. Now, in regards to the benchmark scores, this is definitely a powerful model for its size as well as its pricing. Now, in terms of its context window, we obviously know it has a 1 million context window, but it does pretty good in comparison to many of these other models like OpenAI's 04 Mini, Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, Croc 3 Beta, as well as DeepSeek R1. In most cases, it's out competing it, but the only thing that I would say it's slightly behind is on live code bench, but in other cases, it is doing pretty good overall. In multilingual, long context, as well as math and science, it is outperforming all these other models. In code, it's slightly behind, but it's definitely a great alternative to use in comparison to Cloud 3.7 Sonnet due to its pricing. What's nice is that you can now access this model within Google AI Studio. So if you click on the drop down menu, you're going to be able to see the new 2.5 flash preview. You can then select it and you can see that there's two options to use different modes. You can use the thinking mode as well as setting the thinking budget so that you don't have to use the actual mode and it uses a cheaper option. So now let's focus on a couple of different prompts from reasoning to front end all the way to mathematics. We're going to be assessing this model on a couple of these different benchmark tests to see how well it is now yesterday we actually had taken a look at the o3 and saw that it was a decent model that was capable of outperforming all of these different benchmark scores but let's see if the gemini 2 point flash is capable of doing this so in this case we're gonna have it first create the front end from modern note taking app and i'm gonna have it so that you can add sticky notes and this is essentially gonna assess the model in terms of building user interfaces handling ui and ux design logic so let's see what it ends up generating for us i'll open the file up once it finishes generating this and there we go our first iteration of the sticky note app that was generated and it looks absolutely amazing the functionality of it actually works as well so in this case i can go ahead and add different types of nodes there's the drag and drop functionality and you can even add different colors but what i really like is that it added this feature of locking the actual note so if we want to go ahead and unlock it we can write something like creating a youtube video then we can go ahead and lock it and you can actually move it around now there's small subtle things that need to be fixed like the color text of the color over here within this drop down menu but overall it did a pretty decent job in generating this advanced sticky note app which is capable of generating the functionality as well as a decent front end so this is definitely deemed a pass Next, we're going to have it create the Python implementation of Conway's Game of Life. This is a coding simulation terminal application category, and we're trying to see how well the model is in terms of returning the Python script, as well as generating the algorithmic design for this. The code has now been outputted into this Python file. We're going to go ahead and start it up. 
And this is actually the first time that I see available patterns being generated. This is something that I haven't seen with most models, but let's go ahead and generate the glider pattern and click enter. We can add and, and add any sort of generation, let's say a hundred, and then we can see that it generated the simulation within our command prompt or our terminal, which is just insane. So this is definitely deemed a pass. Here is the prompt you guys have been waiting for, and this is where you can see that I'm going to turn on code execution for generating the SVG code for a butterfly shape. The butterfly should uh, be symmetrical, and this is a prompt that we all know is super difficult for most models to actually complete. In this case, we're trying to see the understanding of how well the model is in spatial reasoning, uh, symmetry logic, as well as the knowledge of SVG syntax and geometry. So let's see what it actually ends up generating. Now, what you can also do is whenever it's generating an answer, you can see the reasoning, the plan, and the structure that it's developing for this. So it has generated the answer. I'm going to go ahead and copy this code and see what it was capable of generating. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis. So this is where you can easily get up to date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. Here is an online SVG viewer. Let's go ahead and paste it in. And there we go. Surprisingly, it did get the butterfly shape right. Now the color scheme might not be appealing, but it did get the functionality of the butterfly wings right, which is kind of similar to how the original Gemini 2.5 Pro was capable of generating. So overall, I'm pretty surprised to see that it was capable of doing this. And so far, it looks pretty impressive in terms of the answers that I got from three of these different generations. Next up is a prompt where I'm stating a train leaves City A at 9 a.m. and it's traveling at 60 kilometers an hour. Another train leaves City B at 11 a.m. traveling towards City A at 90 kilometers an hour. The distance between City A and City B is 450 kilometers. What time do the two trains meet? And essentially this prompt is focusing on understanding the speed distance time relationship and solving this algebraic equation. And we can see from the different sorts of steps that it takes, it focuses on getting the correct answer, which is 1.12 p.m. So this is definitely deemed a pass. Next up is a creative coding prompt. And essentially, this is where I wanted to code a TV that lets me change channels with number keys 0 to 9. And I wanted to return a p5.js sketch for it. Essentially, it's a creative coding prompt that focuses on how well the model is in understanding interactive programming and p5.js canvas manipulation. So let's see what it actually ends up generating for us. And there we go. This is what I was capable of generating with this model. It looks pretty decent in my opinion, and I was able to get a lot of different creative generations within this TV app. And you can see there's a lot of different types of generations that it was able to output. So this is definitely deemed a pass. The next prompt is a reading comprehension and scientific reasoning prompt. Essentially where I'm having it read three sections of a climate modeling paper and explaining why a hybrid model was better. So I'm trying to see the approach that it finds as well as how well it is in terms of generating the answer. And you can see how quick the model was in terms of generating this response and having the ability to read through the full on paper and focus on the three types of paragraphs. It was able to synthesize the multi-section information, draw the inference, and it came back with this articulated answer. And you can see that it is kind of reasonable in terms of what it was capable of generating. So if you actually read through it, it is definitely a valid answer, which is why I would give this a pass. The last prompt is a deductive reasoning prompt and essentially there's a detective case with five suspects and conflicting statements. Only one person is telling the truth who is guilty. Now this is where we're assessing the model's ability to process conditional statements and you can see one person is saying the other person is guilty, the other person is saying I'm not guilty, and the other person is saying I wasn't even there, I didn't do it. So essentially we're trying to see if it's logically able to deduce the truth based off of the different sorts of constraints that are set. And finally, we get the correct answer where David is guilty, which is 100% fitting the actual answer. And it is also reasoning quite well in terms of explaining all the different possibilities. So this last prompt is definitely correct and a pass. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, 
you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different AI tools for free on a monthly basis, plus daily AI news and exclusive content, plus a lot more. And just like that, we have all of these different benchmark scores tested and evaluated and this model scored a pass on all of them, which is definitely impressive. And in my opinion, what really makes this model more impressive is obviously its pricing structure, which is why I would really want to use this model. This is a budget friendly model that will get you the same sort of performance that you would get from most of the other state of the art models like Gemini or Gemini 2.0 Flash, Gemini 2.5 Pro, as well as many of the other models that we saw within the benchmark sheet like Rock 3, as well as Claude 3.7 Sonnet. But with that thought guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, got some sort of value out of it. Make sure you subscribe to the second channel, follow me on the newsletter, follow me and join the Discord, as well as taking a look at the Twitter page. And lastly, make sure you get subscribed, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out fellas.